Directed by Ken Powers, Joaquin Dos Santos, and Justin K. Thompson, Across the Spider-Verse was released on the big screen today and is already taking the world by storm. Across the Spider-Verse follows Miles as he navigates the world of parental expectations, being a teenager, and of course, being a superhero. Miles and his cross-dimensional friends are no stranger to interdimensional travel. But what happens when the timelines are disrupted? As the many timelines of the different Spider-Verses converge, things just get messier and messier, and the villains get stronger and stronger. Other than delving into a lot of different Spider-Verses, we also get to delve into character backstories and see what their lives are like in the present day, in their dimension. Faced with new troubles at just about every single turn, Miles, with the help of his cross-dimensional friends, figures out his place in the world and claims his role as Spider-Man. Even though this was a superhero movie, it wasn't just a superhero movie. It's also a coming of age story. It's a story about grief. It's a story about finding your own place in the world and not letting other people tell you how you're supposed to be or who you, who you are supposed to be. It's not just a one dimensional story of a superhero that saves the world and that's it. And with all of these different themes and plot lines and characters being introduced, it's a really complex movie, but it's not so complex that you don't understand what's going on. There's always that one focal point that just keeps you anchored the entire time and helps you relate all these complex and crazy events that are happening back to the main storyline. And all of this complexity just adds to the depth of the plot and adds to the depth of the characters and the overall themes in the movie. And the movie does take on a more serious tone for the most part, but there's still a lot of jokes and lighthearted moments, and it's still a comic book movie. But the nice thing is that all of the emotions were balanced. There was no scene where there was too much sadness or too much action or too many jokes. It was all very, uh, very balanced, and it all worked together to perfectly create just about every scene in the movie. And with this balance, it also really just made the plot flow really well. Like, it flowed really well between the serious moments, to the funny moments, to the sad moments, to the action scenes. Everything flowed incredibly well, and the movie was just overall really, really cohesive. Nothing felt out of place or forced or anything like that. It all just went together naturally. Other than the plot being phenomenal, the dialogue is some of the best I've probably ever seen in an animated movie. It all was just so natural. It felt like real conversations that happen between real people in real life. It didn't feel forced. Uh, it didn't feel fake. It just felt real. And it wasn't just the conversations that felt natural. The punchlines fit perfectly. The jokes lined up amazingly well. And the impactful statements or the statements that we were supposed to latch onto didn't feel forced. They felt like they were supposed to be there. And it felt like they fit within the scene very well, but also within the conversation that the character was having. And some of the biggest examples of this are when Miles has conversations with his parents. Because of the coming of age aspect, there are a lot of conversations with his parents about growing up and stepping into this role as a young adult. And all of those conversations felt like conversations I had with my parents when I was a teenager. And that most of us have uh, when we're teenagers with our parents about spreading our wings and being more independent. And all of these felt natural. It felt like it was pulling from the writer's personal experience. It didn't feel like this corny over-dramatization of what a teenager is like and what a teenager's relationship with their parents is like. It felt real. And dialogue wasn't the only strong point of this movie. The animation style, as always with Spider-Verse movies, was absolutely incredible. The Spider-Verse animation, for me personally, continues to be some of the strongest animation in the game right now. The animation style in Into the Spider-Verse was really unique and incredibly well done for comic book stylization. Across the Spider-Verse took it up about 10 notches. And it was very obvious the different stylizations of different Spider-Men in Into the Spider-Verse, but it was even more emphasized in Across the Spider-Verse with the differences in stylization for each different Spider-Man. And all of these different styles combined to create so much depth and dimension in each scene, just visually speaking. Each scene was so 
diverse just because of the different animation styles of each Spider-Man. And I feel like the animation styles also played a lot more into the dimensions that the Spider-Men were in. And I feel like the animation styles were a lot more complex this time around because the animation styles played more into the dimensions that people were in or emotions that they were feeling. For example, there's a couple scenes where Gwen is in her dimension and her colorization differs from the rest of the world and it kind of changes depending on the mood that she's in or the things that are happening around her or the people that she's with. And it wasn't just the colorizations that really contributed visually as well. Some of my favorite scenes were when multiple Spider-Men were fighting and it constantly switched perspectives between who was doing something and who wasn't, who was on the sideline, who was fighting, who was saving people who was doing something else. It all just flowed very well as it switched between characters and it was really cool to see so many different perspectives in one scene. And going back to the comic book style, I feel like Across the Spider-Verse played into that even more because I'm not sure if it was in the first movie. It's been a while since I've watched the first movie, but they had like those little boxes that explain certain things that you see in comics. like. In Across the Spider-Verse, it explained certain lingo that characters were using and like gave a little description of what they were using. So it just continued to play into the whole comic book-esque feel of the movie. And it's just all so visually beautiful. And you wouldn't think a comic book movie is beautiful, but it is. Each dimension is just so visually stunning and so different. And it's absolutely mind-blowing. Some of these things don't even look like they belong in the same movie, but it works so well because of the interdimensional travel, and it all makes so much sense. And each dimension fits the character design so well. All of the characters from those dimensions absolutely look like they belong directly in that dimension. And a closely related thing to visual design is sound design. And the sound design of Across the Spider-Verse was just as amazing as everything else. The music just continually fits each scene perfectly. There's not one scene that I can remember where certain songs felt out of place or certain pieces felt out of place. It all just fit like a puzzle. I know a lot of movies are really good with sound design, but Across the Spider-Verse was one of those movies where I actually was paying attention and noticed the music that was happening in the background. And some of the moments that I really noticed were like, during moments of tension, there was a lot of dissonance that like, physically made me feel uncomfortable. And the same goes for more upbeat scenes as well. The sound design was so cohesive with the scene that I actually noticed it, but noticed it in a good way and not in a critical way. As far as criticisms go, I honestly don't really have any. The movie felt long, but it worked for everything that happened. So much information was being thrown at you that you forgot how long you were in the theater. So I think the length of time worked really well because we needed a lot of information for this movie, honestly. We needed a lot of development and for Miles and everyone else to go through certain things for everything to actually make sense. So I, I genuinely think I don't really have any criticisms. Maybe the only criticism would be to let Spider-Punk have more screen time, but that's here nor there. So to close this review out, if you liked the first Spider-Verse movie, please go see this one. Please go see this one. It's very different from the first one, but it makes sense. And it ties everything from the first movie together so well. And not only is this just a good movie overall, I think this is really revolutionizing animated films, especially ones that are based on superheroes. I think both the Spider-Verse movies have set a very high standard for animated superhero movies going forward. And I think that's the kind of standard we need because we've had a lot of animated movies based on video games or superheroes that are just really lackluster and just miss the mark. So I think it's a really good thing that we are finally able to have something that sets a high standard and is just a really good set of movies that will continually fuel this momentum for upping the standard for animated films. And that's not to say every film needs to be a masterpiece, but it really does help to see what is possible with animated films. If you've seen the first Spider-Verse movie, I highly suggest seeing the second one. Even if you haven't seen the first one, I think there's enough context and backstory for you to be able to understand the second one as well. And that's it for my review of Across the Spider-Verse. If you do see the movie this weekend, let me know how you liked it in the comments. And if you like movie reviews, feel free to drop a subscription to my channel. I do movie reviews, trailer reviews, and keep you up to date on the latest movie news. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you on the next one.